Some of the most remarkable people in this world don't appear on movie screens or in sports arenas. They work in offices, study in classrooms, and raise families at home. They're just ordinary people like you and I, ordinary people who have experienced something extraordinary and survived. Journey Women Off the Map is a television series I directed and shot over a 12-year period. Unlike most explorer stories, these modern travelers are women, ordinary women who agreed to be filmed taking journeys to extraordinary places. I'll be traveling to northern Thailand and staying in the area around the cities of Chiang Rai and Chiang Mai. This area has its own unique people who live in the surrounding hills and are known as the hill tribes. For the Thailand program, I was joined by my female host, Sandy. My first day in Thailand was in Chiang Rai. It's a busy city with vehicles of every description. Scooters, cars, and rickshaws are all jockeying for position. Street vendors were on every corner, selling everything you could ever want. I'd always seen in the movies Whenever anyone would be in Southeast Asia, rickshaws seemed to come into the scenes. I always wanted to see what it was like, so my guide, Suda, took me for a ride in a rickshaw. Well, it's a little tight, a yeah, yeah. little tight squeeze, but it's fun. Now, this is quite the uh, shopping area here. I can have quite some busy. fun. Yes, yeah. you can see. <laughs> You've got a little bit of everything here. <laughs> yeah, so I guess there's a lot of bartering that goes yeah. on here. Market here starts quite early in the morning, around 5.30. 5.30, yeah. Oh, yeah. And lasts until 9 o'clock or something. 9. And she showed me the different market areas. Oh, lots of chili. Lots Look at that. Yeah. And the There's cucumber, a of, uh, a vegetable, yeah, Fre fresh food, fresh uh, a vegetable, or ginger. The market, market was incredible, in and all the things they sell there. All kinds of goods from all over Thailand. Yeah, you can see lots of signs. This is all the gold shop. It was a lot of fun. Thailand is well known for its beautiful Buddhist temples, and Suda took me to visit one. Suda, could you tell me a little bit about the protocol or etiquette when you go into a temple? Oh, yes, of course. First of all, we must take a shoe off. Okay. Yes. So, um, I would like to show you about the green jade Buddha up here. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful Buddha. It's gorgeous. It's yeah. a new made. It's newly made? Yes, newly mm -hmm. made. Five, six years ago. Yes, Sandy. I would like to show you how to sit in the temple, okay? <laughs> okay. Just lean down here, okay? Mm -hmm. I know it's not very easy, but you can try. Like that. How you feel? Very good. Yeah? <laughs> okay, we do the why when we come to temple for pay the respecting to Lord Buddha. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we stand down, down for three times. One. And there's two and three. So would you come here and meditate or is yes, it? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. uh, temple is like a community open for everyone. Mm -hmm. You can come uh, whenever you want. You don't have services, like you, you, you come here on your own? Yeah. Okay. But actually we have a Buddhist Sabbath day, like uh, Christian people go to church on Sunday, every Sunday, right? But Buddhism is different. The Sabbath day is not fixed. It's not every Sunday. It depends on the moon. Oh. A vexing moon and a vending moon. It could be changed every week. Mm -hmm. For example, if this week, um, Monday, mm -hmm. next week could be Sunday, mm -hmm, something like mm -hmm. that. Every seven days is changed. And on the Buddhist Sabbath day, um, a Buddhist people, they come to the temple, they can offering food, flowers, uh, candle or incense, and, and, and they pray. Today is the first day of a Buddhist Lent, or the rain retreat. It lasts for three months. In Buddhism, these three months is a good time for the young boy, young man, to be become a monk. 
they can practice, they can study about Buddhism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there anything for women? Uh, yeah, but not 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 really necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, women they can become a nun. Mm -hmm. They wear a white robe and they shave the hair like like a like a monk, mm -hmm. but it, their robe is white. That is we call none. And the other, the men, then they're in the orange. Is that what we see? Yeah, yeah, they are a monk. Nearby, there were some monks praying an elaborate ritual. It was fascinating to watch. Yeah, it Thank is. Thank you very much. <laughs> I hope that. Yeah, you feel you feel, uh, feel better. Peaceful. That's oh, right. Yes, that great. is what uh, people come to temple for. Mm -hmm. When you feel better, you feel happy, you feel good. Mm -hmm. It means temple can help. Suda, this looks like an ancient uh, temple. Yes, it is. This temple called Wat Pasak. Wat Pasak? Yeah. Wat is referred to a uh, temple mm -hmm. and Pasak is uh, a teak tree. Mm -hmm. Because when they first built this temple in the year 1261, they do planting the teak trees, about 300 trees around, uh, around this temple. I understand that the Buddhists Bones are buried in this pagoda. We have a Buddha relics inside this pagoda. We believe that. What kind of relics would that be? Uh, like it's a, a part of the ankle bone. The bone. The ankle bone. Yeah, some some small piece of bone. It was taken from Burma, and they will keep it inside. You can see it's solid. The pagoda was solid. You have no entrance. Mm -hmm. That is the way for the Buddhist people to keep some sacred thing away from enemies. No one can take it out. Oh, it was stolen. Okay. Would that have been then like 700 years ago? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You see this uh, statue? Mm -hmm. It looks a lot like a woman. They you? do look <laughs> like women. I was thinking they must be Buddha women. That's right. A big mm -hmm. shoulder. Mm -hmm. Like like looks a lot like a woman. Mm -hmm. um, in the in the old day, we believe that a rich people, a wealthy people, must be a little bit fat. Mm -hmm. If you're so skinny, it means you are poor. <laughs> yeah yeah, it's, it's Bountiful. poor. That's right. You know about the uh, history of Lord Buddha. I know a little bit. A little bit. Mm -hmm. Yes. We believe in Lord Buddha as a human. He's not a god. He's not a god. He's a human. We believe in him like a great teacher who enlightenment by himself and teaching people what to do, what's, uh, which way is a good way to live. Mm -hmm. Not too loose or not too strong, but in the middle path of balance. Of balance. That's mm -hmm. right, that's right. We next came upon some young girls practicing a traditional Thai dance sometimes known as the fingernail dance because of the six inch long brass nails worn on their fingers. The dance highlights hand movements and young dancers train at a very early age. While in Chiang Rai, I visited the night bazaar. There were all kinds of different goods you could buy. You could buy jewelry, handbags, silk, everything Thailand has to offer was available at the night bazaar. They also had very interesting entertainment.
found out later most of these entertainers were not the beautiful women I thought they were. They were beautiful men. This is the entrance of the temple. And the significance that you have seen here is a naga. What we call a naga is mean a great serpent snake. We believe that they are protect the temple like a dolmen. Mm -hmm. It means when we come to temple, uh, a dolmen or a serpent snake open the door of the heaven for you. So these are guardians to the temples that are at the top of the stairs here? Oh yes, of course. In any temple have a guardian or a spirit for protect the temple. Now these statues are fantastic. Are they guardians as well? Yes, it is. We oh. call them a guardian or sometimes people call them as a giant. Oh. We believe that they are protected the temple. Mm -hmm. As well as the uh, uh, Naka or the snake. We believe both of them protect the temple. This view here then looks over your village, right? Yeah, you can see a natural lake and back there is a rice field. Right now is a uh, farming time of the year. Oh, it is. Yeah. So they're, are they just um, putting the seeds in for the rice? Or That's they... it, yeah. I got to view the fields up close to see the traditional way of preparing the harvest. use oxen to plow the fields and power the machinery. It made me realize how simple life used to be. The farmers at this time of the year were preparing their lands to grow rice. So I had the opportunity to actually get down into the mud and water with one of the farmers who was nice enough to show me how to plow the fields in the traditional way. There were no right or left turns here, only slow, wide movements. We had to coax the ox to move, but of course it had a mind of its own. It was quite something to get down in the mud with this farmer. I had never been in a rice field before, so it was quite the experience. Just outside of Chiang Mai, I was able to watch a woman painting an umbrella in such beautiful colors. It took her quite a while to paint this umbrella. It was just one of the many steps to making these umbrellas. At the end of watching this woman paint the umbrella, I was able to buy it from her. So I was able to take it along with me. And it came in really handy 
because it stopped the sun from burning me. In Thailand, elephants were used to perform heavy work, such as clearing the forests. Even though there's not much need for that now, elephants are still used for other activities, such as safaris. I got the chance to go on an elephant safari. I watched the driver. He was very easy with the elephant. The elephant was very, very gentle in his steps. We crossed the river and you would never have known the elephant was walking across anything other than solid ground. It was an incredible experience viewing the trees and other activity going on from such a magnificent vantage point. Walking through the forest with the elephant was really something. When I started to think about what the elephant meant to the people in Thailand, it made me realize what a great opportunity it was to be sitting on one and watching it. So serene, walking through the forest and how fortunate I was to be able to be so close to such a wonderful animal. The people who live in the hills are known as the hill tribes and their way of life until recently has largely remained unchanged by Thailand's development. There was a group near Chiang Rai called the Akyu. So I went up to their village. I walked through a gateway. This gateway was built to stop evil spirits from entering the village. The shaman in these villages will usually put this gateway up. As I was walking through the village, I saw three old women who were just sitting and talking. <laughs> Their clothes were fabulous, brightly colored, with intricate headdresses covered with coins and beads. I came up to this other woman who was with, as I found out later, her niece and her daughter. I went up to her and she was very friendly. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, okay. <laughs> Hello. Can I come in? Uh, good. Okay. Come okay. In. Okay. 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 <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> so you're beading. Bead. These beads. Loba. 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 We tried to speak to each other without knowing the language. As I went along, it became apparent she knew two other words besides hello. Okay and beautiful. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Oh. Starts in the middle. Oh, okay, mm. that's the mm. middle. Mm. Center. Oh, mm. I see. Okay. And, it, mm -hmm. and mm. what is this? Oh, uh, to make uh, clothes, clothing, mm. like fabric. Mm. 
Yeah, this, okay. Uh. Oh, yeah. Like a making thread, spinning. Sala goliama, goliama. You make it look too easy. Goliano, goliano. Oh, we're coming down to the end. Okay. Okay, now, just like this. Mm. Okay, one more time. <laughs> After trying to spin the yarn, I decided I was hopeless. And I think she agreed with me. She also showed me how to play one of their traditional instruments. Good. Beautiful. Okay, beautiful. Well, beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Let's try that. Mm. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So I. Unfortunately, I don't think I was any better at that. <laughs> Stop now. <laughs> we get another one, and we can both jam. <laughs> I was able to jump in a boat and go down the river. It was so soothing and calming. This experience has changed me in the sense that I think I see things in a broader way. I never knew that one culture could have so many distinct people who have different dances, different dialects, very different arts and crafts, all very different but they are one culture. They all have a great reverence and respect for all life and for each other. But at the same time, they were very fun-loving, very joyful, very colorful people, and it's just been a wonderful experience. It's a true celebration of life. It made me appreciate my life that much more.